Hi, I'm Mark Mann. I'm a photographer. I've been fortunate enough to be making portraits for 25 years and I've really had the amazing chance to photograph some incredible people. One of the things I really love about my job is after the shoot, looking through the images, deciding which one's the one, and then spending some real quality time with it, one-on-one, -on -one, retouching, making the image shine, making it look how I want to look. I've also been retouching for a long time, and my workflow really hasn't changed, but recently, LookDeck sent me this little LookDeck CT, which has been an incredible addition to my workflow and to my kit. Um, I wanted to show you today a little hint of what I do with it. It's the tip of the iceberg, but uh, I wanted to show you how I start. So here's how I've been using my Loop Deck CT with Photoshop or a little insight into that. Um, first thing, open an image. I've got some buttons set up. Um, move it into, make it full size of my image and then I've got a, a button set up for F so I can cycle through my views, which is really good. Um, the next thing is I have all my actions on their own page here. So the first thing I always do with an image is set up, you know, my structure of how I'm going to retouch is done on an action. And then the button right beside that or close to that is save as. So then I know I'm going to save this. Uh, where should we save it? Let's just throw it on the desktop. Um, so basically image is open and it's saved. Um, why I really like this thing is I don't like trying to work on my keyboard over here while, you know, so having, having my hands completely off the computer and off the keyboard really helps. Um, the big wheel here that I kind of tend to keep my thumb on can pretty much be used for anything. I use it for my brush size, as that's something I probably change the most. Um, the buttons up the side here, I've got for uh, opacity, hardness. So I can quickly change my opacity and hardness. Now, I use opacity an awful, awful lot while retouching. So I've also got another setup for opacity, which we can maybe get up to in another video. Um, I have this to set up for a scrubby zoom. Um, so I can move around very quickly, which is great. And then I can choose, I have my favorite tool set up. So let's go to the cloning tool. And what I really like about it is that I can super quick with my thumb, change the size of my cloning um, to uh, clone out areas or whatever, or whatever brush. But w whatever brush you're using, you can super quickly change the size with your thumb without you know, going onto the keyboard or stopping what you're doing. So that's great. Um, so that would be my start with, uh, with uh, retouching. So that's what's great about that. The other thing um, which I really like for brush size is if I, I do an awful lot of quick masks. So uh, let's say I'm gonna do a new quick mask to highlight or low light some, some stuff that I wanna do. If I press the Q key, I have a Q key set, so it takes me into quick mask, go to my brush tool, so press B, uh, not press B, but have my little brush icon. And then um, as I talked about the opacity, um, I have this function key set up so I can do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, uh, or 100, which I've got set up on another key. So I usually like to work in quick mask at around 30%. So function three and my opacity is at 30%. And let's say I just want to hit some, some highlights on these here, on this here, here. So I can totally, you know, adjust my brush size while working, which is, which is really, really useful because it stops me having to stop and, you know, do other things. That sounds super weird. So yeah, so I can adjust my brush size um, if I really want to quick, if I want less opacity, function one, that's going to take me down to 10%. Um, and I can start painting super quick on this quick mask to, uh, to make my curve layer very roughly. Um, the next button I have set up is press Q again, come out of quick max. And the next button I've set up is a new curve layer. 
so it opens a new curve layer and then I can just you know um, work in my curve layer and that's a really quick process for me so let's say for instance I wanted to lighten the eyes um, it's great I have my Q key set up I'm going to do 30 percent um, get my brush size right paint in the eye a little bit um, Oh, that, one, that one doesn't need painted. Uh, press the Q key again, then press Q next to it to give me a new curve. And then I can just lighten the eye. So um, another thing that I like to do all the time is uh, vignettes. Um, and I use uh, the gradient tool. So, uh, so I've basically got six, the number six is set up to go into gradient. Another quick mask, I have my E tool set up as shift. So I can do my gradient, press my Q to come out, press my new uh, curve and just, you know, m make my gradient however I want to do it. So I absolutely love this for Photoshop. It's the first thing in a long time that has made a really big uh, and important difference to my Photoshop workflow. Um, when you guys are setting this up, be patient. Uh, this thing has an, such incredible capability that it's just not press and go. You, you should really take some time and think about where you want your buttons, what you want to do with your buttons, how your buttons should be laid out. A little bit of patience on the setup. Uh, Loop Deck have got great support if you need help because sometimes it's not quite as obvious as you might like it to be, but all in all, game changer for my workflow. If you get a chance to check one out, go for it. Um, thanks.